we're going to start doing something a little different. Um, the Lord placed in my heart to do, you know, Bible studies, late night Bible studies. And we talk about certain things um, and we kind of break down the text and, and look at the text for what it says. Um, and tonight it will be no different. Um, I have uh, an awesome man of God here with me. I have my bro, uh, Omar Pickett. Let me bring him on. How you doing, man of God? I'm doing good, doing good. Good to be up here with you, man of God. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we're not out here hunting for trouble. We're not out here hunting for trouble. We're not out here doing nothing. But we are, we are two hungry preachers, hungry men of God who want to talk about things. And those who are interested, you are more than welcome to join in and, and listen in to what we'll be talking about tonight um, and to be a part of the discussion. Uh, if you have comments, place them in the comments and we'll definitely get to them. But yeah, so we're going to jump into it. Um, so the first two videos that I played um, are definitely alarming. They're very troubling. I've shared uh, one the first video earlier in this week. Uh, and honestly, the day it came out, I wanted to jump on live and, and say something about it immediately. Uh, but the Lord kind of led me to take a step back. Um, and said, let's do this on Friday. Let's just talk about this. Because one thing I want to start doing, as I already said, is start looking at scripture, uh, pulling out what scripture really says uh, and diving deep into the scriptures and pulling stuff out and, and really understanding what the word says. Uh, tonight, we're talking about false prophets. Um, Ezekiel 13 uh, is the foundation of the scriptures that we're going to be looking at tonight. Um so for those who are in here, those who are tuned in and watching, welcome. Like I said, we are talking about false false prophets. You are more than welcome to chime in, be a part of the conversation. Uh, this is not has anything to do with the podcast or the radio show, but this is solely all about, you know, having this opportunity to share the word with you guys uh, and have you guys be a part of the conversation as well. So tonight may get a little bit off the rails, but we're going to take it there. <laughs> I already know. My bro Omar is ready to go. And so we just going to uh, open it up with a quick word of prayer. Father, in Jesus name, I pray that we will uh, not take anything away from your word. But I pray that we will uh, be able to present the gospel the way that you have intended it for us to uh, present it. God, I thank you for each and every person that is represented um, on this call on tonight or on the live on tonight. I pray that as we uh, share your word, as we dive deep into your word, that you will speak to us. And that you would give us um, a new revelation or uh, the clear and, and correct revelation and correct interpretation of what your word is uh, saying on tonight. I thank you and I give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, bro, what are your initial thoughts? Before we jump into any scripture, what are your initial thoughts <laughs> on those two videos? Because we've been texting back and forth. So I know your thoughts, but I also know that you're ready to just jump in <laughs> and talk about these things. Y'all see my so go ahead right now. Um, <laughs> man, I feel like there has been such a culmination of what has been an embarrassment uh, of people who claim to be uh, flowing in the prophetic when really they're flowing in the pathetic. They're just doing all sorts of mess, putting their own spin on stuff. And, you know, they've all, it, just the whole prophetic movement, so much a big part of it has so been corrupted by what we've seen, whether it's been prophecies about COVID or prophecies about Trump or prophecies about the election. It's just been really a total mess. And people claim to be speaking what thus saith the Lord, and they're speaking stupid. I mean, that's what they really are. They're speaking stupid. And it's, um, you know, we can sit up here and laugh, but the problem is, is that they become, to, the, to a dying America, a representation of Christ. The next generation looks at that and says, if that's Christianity, I don't want no parts of it. And they're being a part of a great, they're being used to draw people away instead of drawing people towards Christ. So we have to, as believers, call out the mess. You've got to mark, the Bible says to mark them that cause division and strife amongst you. And yep. the folk who are causing this mess, we just got to call it out as it is. We got to speak the truth. 
in love and say, hey, this does not represent Christ. These folk are representing their own mess and their own foolishness. And that's really what they've been doing on a massive scale that has reached through the entire country. But I'll start right there. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree wholeheartedly, a hundred percent. I think the the biggest thing is that we had this conversation back in um back in October when I did the What's Your Why series. I'm not What's Your Why, but when I did the um the Vulture Values panel discussion, and it's so ironic. I was looking at the videos the other night, and um, Keith Giles really hit the nail on the head when he was talking about um you know his prediction of how things are going to turn out he was like if trump does not win then it's going to be a backlash it's going to be some craziness that goes on y'all can go back and watch it if you don't believe what i'm saying is true go back and watch it he said it then he was like if trump does not peacefully leave things are going to happen um and we see these things taking place um not just talking about the u.s capital uh siege but just you know everything that's in the culmination of that you know you're seeing um, a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers who are, you know, still taking up for Trump, still believing that, you know, he is he is the chosen man or he is God's man and he is going to be the one. And he's still going to be the president. And we've gotten this far um, and let the record reflect. He's not the chosen man. He, he's not the president. Uh, Joe Biden is. And before we go any further, I want everybody to know this right off the bat. I voted for neither one of them. So my skin, I don't have any skin in the game with either candidate. Um, my position has always been I want God to be glorified, uh, whoever he puts in place and is, is whoever he puts in place. Um, I know that our votes has a lot of say in that. But for me personally, I literally I, I literally li left this vote. <laughs> in the hands of God and said, whoever the majority of the people vote in is who they vote in. Cause I just couldn't put myself on either, um, put my vote or cast my vote for either person. But, um, uh, and it seems to be like, as we're starting to get more and more into, um, what this, you know, every, what this presidency is all about and what the end of this last presidency has been, um, uh, I kind of feel more confident and glad that I made that decision. Um, I feel like I put God first on the ballot. I really did. Um, a lot of people feel like they put God first by voting for Trump. A lot of people felt they put God first by voting for Biden. That's between you and God. But my biggest hang up and my biggest issue is when we have pe preachers, pastors, prophets uh, operating in the pathetic, like you said, to convince people um, that, you know, they are, you know, not Christian if they vote a certain way uh, or do things a certain way. A lot of people have. Um, values and morals and things that they, um, you know, hold true. And it's not that they are taking a back step or a back seat to Christian principles or Christian issues when it comes to certain things that they're voting on. Um, but I think that we have to have that open heart to receive, um, you know, things that people are, you know, conversations and, and listen to what people are saying um, and listen to why people voted the way they vote and why people do the things they do. Um, I, I believe 2020, you know, I, I joke when 2020 started us <laughs> because everybody's thing was 2020 vision. But 2020 really did open a lot of people's eyes. It opened my eyes to a lot of things. And I know 2020 vision is perfect vision, but it really gave me perfect vision on a lot of things um, in life uh, concerning um, a lot of the, the, the preachers that we listen to on a day to day basis and how they are still rallying around um, this thing. Uh, or this Trumpism that we uh, affectionately call it um, and still holding true to those things. Um, I know it's going to be tough for a lot of people who listen <laughs> and you haven't already tuned me out, but it's going to be tough for you to, to hear some of the stuff that we're talking about tonight. But I truly believe that the Lord, uh, you know, what he has set in motion will prevail. Um, I, I think back in 2016 when Trump was elected, um, I laughed and I and because I was just laughing at just about all my friends who were Democrats and how they were just going and losing it and everything like that. And I was just like, God is in control. Like if God put if God put Donald Trump in office, he's going to take care of us. He's in control. And then fast forward to 2020. <laughs> God, God is allowing a lot of people may take this. Like, oh, God did not allow this. God allowed Joe Biden to be our president. <laughs> God is still in control. He's still in control and he's still going to take care of us. He's still going to watch over us. And I, I feel like our faith is lacking when we say things like 
um, you know, this isn't God's way or this isn't God's plan or whatever. Like, how is that? How is that so? How is it not God's plan? This is what God has intended for us to do uh, or intended for his people um, in this country. Um, so let's jump right into it, bro. Can I, I say I'm, something? Yeah, go ahead. I don't, hey, if you, if, I'm, I might, I might cause you to lose a few more people, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit of a preface and then I'm really going to go there. Um, I do believe in diversity of thought politically amongst the mm -hmm. body of Christ. So there's going to be people who love God and vote for Trump and there's going to mm -hmm. be people who love God and vote for Biden. There's going to be people who love God and voted third party or neither. Mm -hmm. That's fine. With that being said, what thing 2020 showed me is that there's a lot of witchcraft in the prophetic community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of seduction. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who claim thus saith the Lord and then spoke their own mess mm -hmm. and spoke what they wanted to be true. Mm -hmm. And it was not true. Mm -hmm. And they created really a godlike figure mm -hmm. in Donald Trump. They won't say that, but they did. And I, here's my proof. Here's my evidence. The Bible says in first in second Samuel chapter 12, when David, who the Bible says is a man after God's own heart, mm -hmm. when he walked, found himself in sin with Bathsheba and uh, killed Uzziah to cover it up, Uriah to cover it up. Mm -hmm. God used the prophet Nathan mm -hmm. to call out even the anointed man of God in David. Yep. Even David was not above being called out when he was in error. Mm -hmm. But these preachers, <laughs> these prophets, here we go. These P R O F I T S, not P R O P H E T S. These mm -hmm. prophets, what would they? What do they have to say when God's anointed Donald Trump was cussing out Colin Kaepernick for taking a knee during the anthem and calling him an sob? What, what would these prophets say? What was Franklin Graham saying? Did he have something to say? No. What were, you know, these prophets saying when they were creating a family separation policy and they were separating families at the border using a very uh, barbaric thing as a deterrent to keep people from going across the border? Something that we as believers in our own hearts, walking in love and compassion, should have saw that and said, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Not one word of criticism from these prophets. Here, here's what really got me over the last two months. This is the one that really got me. We've seen over 60 lawsuits since yeah. November about the yep. election. Mm -hmm. 60 lawsuits about the election. How many lawsuits were filed by the Trump administration to stop abortion? Zero. No, where's the criticism about that? Oh, none of these prophets got nothing to say because they're never going to call out. But I thought I thought Trump was the man that got <laughs> put in office to stop abortions. But he didn't file one lawsuit to stop abortion. He didn't push mm. one law to start to stop abortion. Mm. Planned Parenthood got more funding under Trump than under Obama. Mm. But not a word from these prophets who will never criticize Trump, even in the way the prophet Nathan criticized David. Mm -hmm. So even if they believe he's the anointed, even if he believes he's someone God is using, the fact that they refuse to criticize him shows that he's not just a person being used in their eyes. He is literally a step below Jesus. That's mm -hmm. how they, they view him. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's disgusting. And it's really uh, uh, witchcraft in my eyes. Yeah. You know, what really bothers me too, is that it's like they overlook certain things. They're able to look overlook certain things and say that I, if I can, I can vote for Trump. My vote is for Trump. I can overlook his, 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 his cussing. I can look overlook the comments and the things he said. I can look overlook his attitude. I can look overlook all of that. Because I truly believe that this is God's man because he stands for God's things and this, that, and the third. Um, but it's like, but it's like you put a hard line, uh, draw a hard line in the sand for certain things that Democrats do um, that I feel that the church should have compassion for, <laughs> as the Democrats have compassion for. Um, and I feel like we are, we are, we're taking steps back. Rather than taking steps forward as a as a Christian as a body uh, of Christ, so I want to jump into the scriptures. Uh, I was gonna I, say one more thing. One I'll more go thing. ahead. I'm gonna go one go more ahead. thing. And the way, and I hate to say this too, because this this I'm a, I'm even gonna go even there even further. Go further. Did you see how many and many people saw what happened on the sixth? Mm -hmm. Happened at the Capitol. All the riots and the the destroying of walls and the throwing feces in the Capitol building and 
the nooses that were outside and the fact that people were out there chanting to basically kill the vice president. How many Jesus flags were out there? A lot. There were so lot. many Jesus there flags. There were so out there. many Jesus flags. And that's problematic because people look people are looking at them like, oh, that's what Jesus is all about. That's who Jesus uh, you know died on the cross. That's who your Jesus is. And that's the thing that really bothered me because I'm like, no. That's that's not my Jesus. <laughs> hashtag not my Jesus. Like not my saying, Jesus. hashtag not my president. That was hashtag not my Jesus because my Jesus would not be at that <laughs> at that rally or whatever they had going on at this Capitol, trying to take siege over of the U.S. Capitol uh, and try to stop or block the votes. Jesus never did that in his ministry at all. And even when <laughs> and even when that pastor that we that we just showed, what's his name? What he said, Bob Jones or something like that. And George Pearson, pastor George, George Pearson, Pearson. Mm -hmm. and he flipped over the tables. Jesus didn't flip over the tables because of ballots and because of, 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 of um, you know, uh, alleged fraud in the election. He flipped over the tables because he was mad about them selling in the temple. That has nothing to do with election fraud or whether or not the choice kept the chosen candidate is going to be in office or not. And so I feel like when we look at a lot of what the, the problems is and a lot of the things that um, people are saying and doing is coming from inerrancy of scripture. Um, and I've said this many times. People are are uneducated or ignorant um, to a lot of what the scriptures are saying contextually versus <laughs> versus just reading the scripture and throwing it out there and saying this is what the Bible says. And so I'm going to stand on it. And I think one of the things that really challenged me the other day, uh, a post that Pastor um, Josh Hart um, had posted was he was talking about how New Testament Israel. Um, is not actually the country of Israel. <laughs> That's another topic for another day. And if we, uh, if you guys want to talk about that next Friday, we can talk about that next Friday and break that down. Um, uh, but that really, you know, kind of transformed some things for me. Cause I was like, you know, I never, I thought I've known this, I know these things for a long time, but I never really put two and two together and, and, and applied it that way. But it made sense. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, taking that to be gospel and running with it, but I have to continue to study and continue to, to make sure that it's biblical and it's foundational. I don't just take things that people say and run with it. I have to study it on my own and really come to that, um, turn, come to grips with that by myself. And I feel like a lot of people omit that, you know, they just take what people say for granted and run with it. And it's almost funny because I was listening to, I was watching the TikTok the other day. We're going to get into scripture, but I was watching a TikTok the other day and the pastor was talking about how people flock to pastors or, or churches because they have itching ears and they're preaching the same things that they want to hear uh, and they're preaching everything they want to hear. And oftentimes when pastors or preachers preach that particular sermon or preach that particular text, they're talking about a lot of these new age churches where the pastors wear ripped jeans, uh, and tattoos, uh, you know, your churches like Elevation, your churches like those type of churches. They're talking about those type of churches. But you fail to admit that you are preaching to an audience of people who think like you, talk like you, act like you. Um, and they are flocking to you because they have itching ears because they want to hear exactly what you're saying because they agree with it whether it's biblically correct or not. And <laughs> that is just as much of a sin as the other. And so we have to get back to being um, so biblically in tune with what the scriptures are saying and doing exactly what Christ would have us to do in this season. Um, you are 100 percent right about that, because I was listening to a video of another dude who's been keep prophesying Trump's going to win. His name is Hank Kuhlman out of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And. Um, he's the preacher that received the prophetic mantle, reads the presidential mantle <laughs> with the Trump uh -huh. flag. So that just shows you how deep in it he's in, he is. But he actually got up and he was talking and they asked him and he said, I've been getting larger crowds than I've ever gotten before as I continue to preach that Trump won the election. And you're very right about that. People want to hear that Trump won. You make mm -hmm. a video today saying how the Democrats stole the election. You'll get 100,000 views on YouTube in three hours mm -hmm. because people want to hear that. They want to believe that Trump mm -hmm. won. So in that same reign, you're just feeding the people what they want to hear. And it's a lot of what these P-R-O-F-I-T prophets, mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. They're just feeding the people what they want to hear, hear, giving them this alternative reality that's not based in the truth. It's not based in the truth at all. And they're lining their pockets with it because they're enjoying the fruits of that of that labor, right. <laughs> which is sad. Uh, and that should never be. And I'm, I'm going to reiterate that that should never be 
Uh, any preacher, pastor, whatever, that should never be your focus in ministry is to how much money you can get um, out of out of certain things that you preach and say and do. Like we we do this to glorify God. We do this to advance the kingdom. We do this so that souls can be saved, period. Like we ain't going to get paid at the end of the day when we die and go to heaven. Our payment is that we get to go to heaven. We are, yeah. our, set, our debt is forgiven. We're paid in, it's paid in full because of Christ's uh, blood, shed, uh, blood shed on the cross. That's what that is. So I want to jump into these scriptures because yeah, as, yeah. As, I, as I get into them, bro, it, it, it really, it's like it leaps off the page. <laughs> Literally, it leaps off the page. And so we are coming from Ezekiel 13. i am be reading from the ESV. And I'm pulling it up here because I want y'all to see exactly what I see. And I don't want y'all to think that I'm taking stuff out of context or whatever. So Ezekiel chapter 13, verse one, it says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophecy against the prophets of oh, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are prophesying and saying to those who prophesy from their own hearts. Hear the word of the Lord. Let's stop right there. <laughs> I didn't know he was in 2020. First of all, first of all, I, I remember the Lord led me to the scripture. And as soon as I read it, it was like Ezekiel wrote this over 2000, more than 2000 years ago, like mm-hmm. 3000 years or whatever. And when you look at what he said, then comparing to what he's saying now, a lot of what you hear, people are saying, hear the word of the Lord. And that leaped out to me tremendously, mainly because this is a direct, a directive directly from God saying, prophesy to the people. And I want you to tell them this is directly the word from the Lord, not from your own hearts. And nine times out of 10, we hear a lot of these prophets, like you said, P-R-O-F-I-T. They're prophesying directly from their own heart and their own motives their own things, things that they want to come across, they won't come across, or things that they um, feel and believe is true. And so as we get down a little bit deeper, in verse 3, it says, Thus says the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Your prophets have been like jackals among ruins. (laughs) Oh, Israel, you have not gone up into the breaches or built up a wall for the house of Israel that it might stand in battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen false visions and lying divinations. They say, declares the Lord, when the Lord has not sent them, sent them, and yet they expect him to fulfill their word. You know, what, what really stood out to me here is that it says here in verse six, they have seen false visions and lying divinations. And what that word really means is they're causing division based on their false visions and based off of their lies. And they say declares the Lord, but it's truly coming from their own heart or coming from their own motives, coming from their own lips. And because of this, they're saying when you look at it in today's context, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is causing division. That is causing division. X, Y, and Z is causing division. Not what I'm saying is causing division. Because what I'm saying is coming from the Lord, but it's actually coming directly from my heart. But that's not what Ezekiel, <laughs> that's not even what Ezekiel 13 verse 6 is saying. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, go ahead. Man, it's crazy because I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm mind blown right now. Ezekiel I, is describing it's describing exactly what's going on. And it just shows me how much you'll see. You know, I see people say, let me declare the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord says Mike Pence is going to overturn the election on January 6th, mm-hmm. which is definitely not God because it shows you don't even have an understanding of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. There's no way God doesn't understand how the Constitution works. That's just your own ignorance. Mm -hmm. But that's what's been going on, and it gets these people so riled up, and they're so filed up, and it's like, yes, yes, because the prophet said it, we're going to stand by the prophets, and it's just, no, this is somebody talking 
out of their own mind what they want to happen. What they want to happen and what they want and wish and praying and hoping will happen. But it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Period. And it's funny because like the, that line, divinations or divine nations, it's more of like you're manipulating people into believing that what you want to be true is actually true. But the truth of the matter is your manipulation is causing people to believe that what you're saying is true when in factuality it's actually a lie. And that's the problem with so many um, things or so many preachers today is that they <laughs> profit a lie and it manipulates people. And then when people get on there and call them out on it, they get bad at people calling them out on it because they feel like, oh, you called me out on something that I should <laughs> that I should be called out on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest issues is that when you call one of the biggest things and I've broken this scripture down to its teeth. It's the scripture that we often say a lot. Um, Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. That scripture is taken heavily out of context, mm-hmm. heavily out of context, really? because one of the reasons why it's taken heavily out of context is because. <laughs> it's originally a song, a song that David wrote. And he wrote it specifically because he was talking about his victory in battle over, um, I don't want to say a victory in battle, but his victory to overcome a certain king. Uh, when, and this all this is in, this is in I believe it's in First Kings, um, this, the actual story is when he is fleeing from Saul. And when he's fleeing from Saul, he is, um, he goes to uh, an adjacent city. And in this city, the king of that city welcomes him in. But at the same time, um, he kind of sneaks past in as well. Um, And he knows that this king wants to kill him. And because he knows that this king wants to kill him, he acts crazy so that he can slide and get out of his get out the king's way. Mm -hmm. And when he says that do not uh, touch, not my anointed one, do my prophet no harm, he's talking about that and how. David was able to slip from that. And then also he's talking as well about he's going back to the story of, uh, I believe it's Moses as well, um, where he goes into, or I'm sorry, Abraham, he goes into a city. He, um, he, (laughs) he deals with a King in that area. Mm -hmm. And instead of telling the King that his wife, Sarah was who his wife was, he gives the King his wife. And not only does he give the King his wife, he gives it to, he gives her to him, but, the king, because of his relationship with the Lord, stops him dead, stops Sarah dead in her tracks and stops whatever he's about to do. And he goes to uh, to Abraham and says, why are you doing this to me? Why do you bring this sin to my, uh, to my place, to where I'm at? And when we talk about that, in the context of do my prophet no harm um, and, and, and that scripture, he's really talking about how the fact that when, when God stepped in and intervened on behalf of those two situations, he did not allow any harm to come to his prophet because his prophet did something stupid. <laughs> not only did his prophet do something stupid, but because of the, 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 the flaws that this, this, this prophet has done, God still covered him. He still protected him. He still brought no harm to him because he belonged to God. And not only does that is taken out of context, but we're <laughs> when you look at the script even deeply, it doesn't say touch not more anointed one. It says ones. Plural. Ones. <laughs> touch not my anointed ones. And he's talking about the actual, the whole body of Israel, the entire body of Christ. And so when you, when you take that scripture and you say, touch not my note to one, do my prophet, you take it out of context because you're, you're saying you're making it more personal than you're actually saying the right thing, which is touch not God's God saying, do not bother his people. Don't do them no harm. It's not just the person in the pulpit. It's not just the person in the pulpit. <laughs> and I know it took a long time to get there, but we got mm-hmm. there. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that that is the case. That is the case. And so jumping back into it. Verse seven says, have you not seen a false vision and uttered a lying <laughs> divination? <laughs> this is so funny. Whether you have said, 
Whenever you whenever you have said, declares the Lord, although I have not spoken, mm. therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have other falsehood and seeing lying visions, therefore, behold, I am against you, declares the Lord God. God is talking directly to the false prophets. He's saying, I'm against you because you have uttered falsehoods, because you are prophesying uh, false information, because you go out here spreading lies. I'm against you. And this is why it's so important that you know we prophesy we say the thing you say things right according to scripture because we want to make sure that we are directly hearing from god and that we are um, truly saying what god is saying because not only can god be against you but you can mess around and actually bring curses on yourself because of the fact that you are talking irreverently about the bible you're taking things out of context or you're taking things wrong or you allowing your own motives to be a part of that. And that's why it's so important that whenever we say thus says the Lord, it has to be what thus says the Lord, not what thus says TJ or what thus says Omar or what thus says so and so. It has to be what thus says the Lord. And that's why for preachers, I'm a preacher myself. That's why I'm talking about these things. I take that responsibility so heavily. You know, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm making sure I'm hearing directly from God because I understand what's at stake. Souls are at stake. And if I say anything wrong and I say anything left, it could cause somebody to leave Christ. And it, that blood would be on my hands, especially if they leave Christ and then they die and they're going to hell. That's on me. And that is something that we have to take into account when we're talking about things, when we're saying these things in the pulpit, when we're preaching these things, prophesying or prophesying these things, you know, it should not be for a prophet, it should not be for to make people feel good. And I know that that kind of it kind of goes uh, in contrast to what we hear a lot, because a lot of people just want to feel good. And a lot of people just want, you know, to feel accepted and things like that, which is fine. But for the preacher, it is not our job to make everybody feel comfortable in their sin, period. When we preach against sin and when we do different things like that, it is our job to allow God, the Holy Spirit, to flow through us and to prick you in your spirit, to convict you and to make you come um, into Christ. Do you want to add anything before I keep going? Man, <laughs> let I'm me just tell going you, in. there's so many things I can kind of go with right there. And I got a question. Um, What's up? What? So I believe it's very important that when you are speaking uh, very much like you said, when you're saying what thus saith the Lord, you have to take that seriously. It cannot just be you mm -hmm. and it can't just be you talking. Um, so many people will claim it's the Lord and it's not. And they're just feeling it. And I remember one time being in a service and somebody, uh, I guess they thought they were prophesying on me. Uh, they thought they were. They thought they were speaking the word of the Lord on me and they were way off. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they had said I was shacking up and I'm like thinking to myself, like my wife <laughs> is sitting right over there. What do you mean I'm shacking up? And so I really didn't know where to go with that. Like, yeah. uh, no, not quite. <laughs> and I guess my situation comes up is that when you get into these situations, how comfortable are you and how comfortable should we be at calling out false prophets when they're false. Mm. How comfortable should we be in saying, no, that's not what God said. How many times have we just let things slide because that person has a title and we don't want to be embarrassed. So let me not get up there and embarrass myself and let me not say nothing when that person claims to be speaking for the Lord and they're not, mm -hmm. you know, What's our responsibility? Do we leave, do you believe? Let's say we're in a service and somebody prophesies something on mm -hmm. you that ain't right. Mm -hmm. So the Lord says, "Yo, the Lord, the Lord said he got a, he, he got your wife waiting on you, and you married. You already <laughs> married, right? You, you know, do you call that out right then and there, or do you just kind of smile and go, I don't know what to do about that? Like, <laughs> what do you think we should do as believers? Right, I, man. As believers, mm -hmm. what does the Bible say? I'm asking, I'm asking you, what does the Bible say? 
See now me, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you call it out, but I just want to know what people got to say. But I think it. that you call it out, of course, but at the same time, you have to call it out in a way that, first of all, I, I would say calls out the inerrancy of their prophecy. But at the same time, you don't want to put them on. You know what? Now, actually, I'm not thinking about it. You actually are going to embarrass them when you call them out and say, no, that's not right. My wife is right here. You know, <laughs> it's going to embarrass them. So you had no choice but to just call it what it is. Call the devil out. Yeah. Like James, <laughs> James said, call the devil out. Call it out. <laughs> call it out. Exactly. But I think for me personally, I, I would do what the Bible says. Call, call a spade a spade. Call it out. I know, and it, and, I, and the thought that I'm wrestling with is that it would be hard because I think that for me personally, the person, the type of person that I am, I don't like confrontation. I don't like um, doing things that is uncomfortable. To be honest with you, like right now, it's uncomfortable, but I'm I'm, I'm able to do it. But I don't like things that's uncomfortable because um, of the feelings and the the backlash that comes with it. But it has to be said, especially if it's the truth. If it's the truth, as Jay said, it shall set you free. <laughs> like it's the truth. Like if God, if somebody prophet lied over you, and you know that it's a, it's a lie and it's not the truth, then you have to call that out immediately. But at the same time, I know me. I'm thinking about it. I, I may be thinking about it too much, but I know for me, I would call it out. But at the same time, I would immediately feel some sort of guilt because I kind of put you on the spot, especially it depends on who the person is. Like if they are like very prominent, because <laughs> then they would be like, well, who is you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> who is you? <laughs> who is you to call me out? But I mean, but at the same time, you have to do what's right by God. And the scripture right. says here, the scripture says here, it says it in, it says it in, in the scripture that we're reading. That you have to pretty much call it out. And, and as Ezekiel, what he's doing in the word, he's telling these false prophets, look, God is against you. I don't know what y'all doing, but God is against you. Y'all out here saying the wrong things. And I think that that's where I wrestle with. And that's why I want to make these 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 type of studies more uh, intimate, more, you know, showing people that we're, we're working through these things because. I don't want you guys to just think, oh, we got it all figured out. <laughs> we got it all together. No, we still figuring it out ourselves. But at the same time, we you see that 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 wrestle between what the words say and what you feel. And you have to stand on what the words say, regardless of what how it makes you feel. I know in that situation, I didn't want the whole church to think I was shacking up, especially when I was married. You know? been, right. Because you don't want the church to think that you're doing anything wrong when you're doing the right thing. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. I definitely get it. Because I know if, if it was me in that situation, I would do the same thing. But my my life is a little bit different than yours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my wife was sitting right at the table. She's like, you shacking up. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <Not quite. laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess so. I guess what you call us doing is shacking me stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what shacking is. I don't know what this is. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, jumping back into <laughs> jumping back into it. So where is that? Verse eight. Uh, yeah, so we, it was at the end of verse eight, verse nine. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who give lying divinations. Um they shall not be in the council of my people, nor be enrolled in the register of the house of Israel, nor shall they enter the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord God precisely because they have misled my people saying peace when there was no peace, because when the people build a wall, these prophets will smear it with whitewash. Now, what's interesting here. Verse 10, that word whitewash. It's talking about when he says you have uh, he says you smeared it with whitewash. Basically, you smeared it with lies or you smeared it with things that is not true. And he's he's sticking with that. That theme of prophesying lies and, and saying the wrong things. And that's exactly where we're at right here with, with whitewash. That's what he's talking about with whitewash. Say to those who smear it with whitewash that it shall fall. So saying people that, and lying and saying it's going to fall, but you know it's not going to fall. 
<laughs> precisely going back precisely they have misled my people saying peace when there is no peace because they build a wall and these prophets smear it with lies when they say to those who smear it with lies that it shall fall there will be a deluge of rain <laughs> oh and you oh great hailstones will fall and a stormy wind break out what's interesting here what's so funny it's that not only do you smear it with lies and you, and you smear it with false things because you're trying to blot it out, but not only is will your lie not stand, he's saying that he's going to prove you wrong. Mm. God, is, God is saying, I'm going to prove you wrong. There will be a deluge of rain, a deluge of rain, and you, O oh, great hailstones, will fall and the stormy wind will break out. He's saying, I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to put you to shame, pretty much. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and I'm going to expose you. That's basically what happened. You know, I think it's interesting. You know, we remember I had that video of the preacher who got up. It was we were still counting the votes mm -hmm. and he gets up there on that Friday night. And I actually put it on my Facebook and he's like, if Donald Trump isn't the president in 2021, then I'll, I'm a quit ministry and I'm never going to do ministry again. And it's it was like 12 hours later. Joe Biden yes. is elected president. It's like, mm -hmm. really, dude, mm -hmm. you're not you're not speaking for me. You think you're being big and bad. But you're not speaking to me. Let me show you how much you're not speaking for me. I'm going to wait till right after you said that, that I'm going to make the election over. Turn in your preacher's <laughs> license, dog. Just immediately. Immediately. With yeah. flying colors. A like, like, mail that joint in. Wasn't even 24 hours later. He gets up there and he says that. And, and it's just, you know, when you claim to be speaking for God, God will show you what you, you really will show are. You. He will you show you what to, you really are. You, you claim to be bringing angels from Africa. God will show you what really is going on, you know? Right. He's going to bring angels from that part of Africa that you didn't even think existed. Thank you. <laughs> exactly what happened. <laughs> and I'm just like, my goodness, man. What are we doing? But these people who claim to be speaking for God, but yet we're speaking their own wills and desires. And God really showed them really the last mm -hmm. couple of months. You don't represent me. Mm -hmm. You speak. You speak your own belly. And mm -hmm. in that same way, we, we have to be careful about doing the same thing. And we got to be careful about who we keep propping up. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who, who got 2016 wrong and we were still propping them up. Yeah, there were. There were so yeah. many people who got 2016 wrong. And I was one of them because I just knew Hillary Clinton was going to win. <laughs> <laughs> See, we can think Hillary's going to win, but you can't say thus saith the Lord Hillary's going to win. First of all, we can't say that at all. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know. We got to when you see this, the Lord is showing you these people ain't speaking for me. Stop giving them platforms. Stop letting them take up your timeline. Stop pouring hundred dollars into their ministry. And mm -hmm. then and then over and over again, they keep being wrong. But you keep elevating them. Mm -hmm. We got to be careful. Exactly. That. And my bro just said, God will allow you to expose yourself. We have to be careful. And that is so true. Right. That is so true. God will put you in situations where you expose yourself. And embarrass yourself for his glory. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all for his glory. And that's the sad part. That's the sad thing. It's all for I mean, I'm not saying a sad thing as far as for his glory, but you being exposed and you being put down, that's sad. But being exposed for his glory, that's a good thing. Because God is showing that he is able to put you on front street and still prove that he is God, regardless. Because that's exactly what he's saying in Ezekiel 13, <laughs> verse 11. There will be a, del a deluge of rain and you, O great hailstones, will fall and a stormy wind will break out. Mm. And in verse 12, it says, and when the wall falls, <laughs> will it not be said to you, where is the coating with which you smeared it? It'll be like, mm. where's the lies that you smeared it with? Mm. Thus says the Lord God, I will make a stormy wind break out in my wrath and there shall be a deluge of rain in my anger and great hell storms, stones and wrath to make a full end. Meaning that his entire his power, his glory, everything about him, he's going to bring you. He's going to expose you. And he's going to put it to end. <laughs> he's going he's going to put it to end by saying this does say it. Well, actually does say it. The Lord, the, you don't. If you're going to speak lies, if you're going to say things wrong about God, he's going to correct him. You're going to correct you, period, quick. Because you're not going to speak uh, lies about him when he didn't even say it. And that's what we're getting out of Ezekiel 13. That's what he's saying. That's exactly what God's saying. He was like, you you can speak your lies all you want, but you're not going to get away with it. And that's the and that's the and that's the that's the reality. 
especially and not just we're not just going to limit this to, to just people who have been speaking lies about the election. Let's talk about people who actually prophesy or prophet lie and, and say certain things and get people hopes up and actually hurt them. That, and they use that that they, they, they prophesy. They said, if you if you up here, give me this hundred dollar seed and in three days, right. you're gonna get and in three miracle. days, you're going to get your thing. And in three days come, you get nothing. You check your mail and you see nothing. And I, I believe as believers, we have to have, uh, I think we got to pray for the sermon. I remember being at a conference and um, it was a week long conference and the Lord had it that on that last service of the conference, I was not there, but my friend was there. And so we're going to all these conferences. We're sowing this money at every offering and it's a cogent conference and you know, there's plenty of offerings. And so we give all our <laughs> offerings out and everything. We get to that last service and this preacher gets up there and this preacher gets up there and he says, he wants everybody to sow a $40 seed. And this preacher gets up there and says, this $40 seed is the difference between your future and your funeral. And I heard about this. Topic, I said, wait a minute. So you mean that it, after all the offerings I gave this whole week, if I don't give this $40 seed, I'm going to die. <laughs> that guy's going to keep all my offers the whole week. Right. You're going to kill me over this last $40. You're going to kill me over this last $40. <laughs> but my friend said he heard it, and he was like, man, I had to sow it to my future. So I bet. And I was like, man, the things that these people will say mm -hmm. to, to like pull on your heartstrings to get your money, mm -hmm. but they're not speaking for God. They're speaking to get their own profits. They're speaking, profits. To, they're speaking to get their own profits. And you know one thing I learned? And, and I'm not trying to expose anyone or expose anything. I'm really not. But... <laughs> I learned that a lot of those, a lot, a lot of times when you see a lot of those prophets or whatnot, they are preaching, and when they're raising their their offering at the end, you think it's going back to the conference, you think it's going back to the church, it's actually going to them. Yep. So they're raising their own offering. Yep. And so they know what they're doing when they're saying, "Anyone who has a hundred dollar seed, and you want me to prophesy into your life right now, this is how you do it." They're lining up their own pockets. And so, as my bro said, like, we have to pray for discernment. And we have to. There are so many there are so many voices that we're going to hear. There are so many things that we are going to see. That's why it's so important that you have the Holy Ghost for yourself, not, not your pastor's Holy Ghost, not your mama's Holy Ghost, not your daddy's Holy Ghost, not your sister's Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost for yourself and understand what the word is saying. Line yourself up with the word of God. That's what that's if you get nothing else out of this, <laughs> out of this Bible studies or out of these Bible studies every Friday night. It's all is I'm always going to turn it back on that. Line yourself up with the word of God, period. If you don't know where anything is at, uh, especially in your own life, line yourself up with God in his word and see where see where you fall at. So. The Holy Ghost, exactly, exactly. That's right. The Holy Ghost. It's it's powerful. It's key. It's very key. It's very key. It is very key. So let's keep moving on down. So verse 16, it says, I'm gonna put it up. It says, The prophets of Israel who prophesied concerning Jerusalem and saw visions of peace for her when there was no peace, declares the Lord. And you, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own minds, prophesy, uh, prophesy against them. And say, thus said the Lord, woe to women who sew magic bands upon all wrists and make veils for the heads of person of every stature in the hunt for souls. Will, your hunt will, you, will you hunt down souls belonging to my people and keep your own souls alive? Now, this is interesting here mm. because... One thing that I there is like a trend going on on um, social media, and I've seen it a lot lately um, coming from a lot of the I would say the conservative side or um, um, uh, what's the uh, kind of what, what, what would you call um, John MacArthur's church? Um, I would say maybe like the fundamentalist. Believer. Fundamentalist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that belief about women preachers and women pastors that women aren't not, not supposed to preach and, and things like that. It's clearly in scripture all throughout scripture that women were preaching. Women were doing a lot in ministry. And so to ignore that 
and to just jump to what Paul said. <laughs> Women are supposed to be silent. It's another thing we take it out of context. No context at all. No context. <laughs> no context. And so here in this scripture, it's so interesting here because Ezekiel is talking about two things. He's 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 really going two folds here. He's talking about uh, false prophets and how they are prophesying lies and how they're spreading these lies and how God is going to protect his name. Um, he doesn't care. If, I mean, he cares that you are uh, if you go out here and say things in his name because he did not give you the authority to say it. And so you're not going to say anything wrong in his name. He's he's going to get he's going to deal with you. But on the, on the contrary, on the flip side, he's talking about how he's going to deal with these female prophets. Not just the male prophets, but the female prophets who do the same thing, but also practice. It's like a form of witchcraft, which is where they are sewing these magic bands upon their wrists and they're making veils over their heads and of persons of every statue in the hunt for souls. It's like they're doing these things to manipulate and to turn things around um, so that they can draw people away from Christ and draw people more to what they are believing and whatever um, they they want to stand. Um, and as we see in this kind of in this day and age, you see that prevalent. Uh, there's a lot of people that will put up an image of Jesus, say this is the God that we're supposed to serve, but it's not the Jesus or the God of the Bible that we're supposed to serve. Um, and I'm not just limiting that to just female preachers. There's male preachers that do that because we've seen it clearly, <laughs> clearly. Um, and when you look at the, the two differences and you look at what Ezekiel is saying, he's showing us about the, the men. And now he's he's turning his attention towards the women. He's saying that pretty much nobody, <laughs> nobody is off limits when it comes exactly. to God, period. And. I want to say I want to I want to sit there for a little bit because, you know, for some reason, we think there are protected people or protected classes from 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 God because you vote a certain way or you do certain things. And I'm not just trying to limit it to voting and, and election and things like politics. But, you know, there is a, a, a direct um, thing that God wants us to do. And that is to say the right thing and say exactly what he's saying. Regardless of who we are, he he doesn't care if women preach, preach the right thing, preach the Bible, preach the gospel, preach this. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't. But the thing, the truth of the matter is there's so many people who are being manipulated. They are being taught to preach a certain way, preach a certain gospel that's wrong. And it's bad because it's spreading this false gospel, this false narrative of who Jesus is. And in my idea, I mean, and, and in my eyes, I believe Jesus is sitting here saying, this is not me. This is not what I'm all about. I'm all about grace, love, peace, hope, all this stuff. Like, yes, I, 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 I don't want you to sin. Yes, I hate the sin, but I don't hate the sinner. <laughs> and for some reason, we have it in our minds that Jesus is just mad at sinners. Jesus is just mad at people for being people. No. When God brought when God came into earth, wrapped up in the flesh of Jesus, he felt every single thing that we feel on a, in every day in our flesh. He knows exactly what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. He lived 33 years <laughs> in that flesh. So he knows exactly what we're going through. And the truth of the matter is, is that we can't limit God to think that, oh, that he 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 never felt any of these things. He said not, but he felt that he felt the temptations. He felt everything, mm -hmm. everything that we felt that we feel now. He felt it. And yet he dealt with it and he and he overcame it. Absolutely. Scripture says that he said we don't have a high priest that has not felt our infirmaries. And that that's what makes him. That's why we can really go to him, because he knows exactly how we feel. Exactly. It's, you know. You know, I don't know if y'all have ever had a job where the and the managers ask you to do something and you can tell that manager's never done it before, but they asking you to do stuff that they obviously know they can't do themselves. It's so much better often when you work for someone that's done the job before and understands what it is that they're asking you to do mm -hmm. versus someone who's just there just saying stuff that they have no idea about. That's not who Jesus is. And I thank God for that. And so mm -hmm. Um, it's just, it's something else. And I just really, 
uh, really do believe that it's so important that when we preach, we are preaching God and mm -hmm. that we're not preaching ourselves. Exactly. And I hate to say it because I feel like we've really been attacking the prophetic all day. And <laughs> there has been, but there has been an over glorification mm -hmm. of the prophetic movement mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. We are mm -hmm. so enamored by gifts, you know, you know, it, 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 that, that enamoring with gifts has been a general problem. You see it even when it comes to singing, we glorify that gift. And if we glorify singing, we definitely going to glorify in prophecy. And mm -hmm. so anybody comes up and they're prophesying, oh, my goodness, we got to, you know, you want to pack a church out? Let a prophet show up in there. First, you got yeah. folk, folk who ain't been there for five years will show up because they want to make sure they got a word because mm -hmm. they're looking for what that prophet has to say. And Jesus mm -hmm. has been right there ready to speak to you every day through his word and you won't pick up your Bible. Won't pick it up. Won't touch it. And that's the sad part. That is the sad part. Man, you, 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 it's got to be about him. And sometimes you get these egos and they, the heads get so inflated. And, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, there's this video out where apparently somebody walked in front of a preacher and the woman go, goes, stop walking in front of the front prophet. Of the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how these people get. They get so big headed. They think mm -hmm. they're so high and mighty. It's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? And, and going back to the scripture, let me put it back on the screen. Going back to the scripture where it says here, uh, when when Ezekiel's turning his focus onto the women, he's saying, "You sew you sew these uh, magic bee bands on your wrists and make veils on, on for your heads, a person of every stature, and in in the hunt for souls, will your own, will your hunt for souls uh, belong to my people and keep your own souls alive?" He's talking about spiritual manipulation, and that's really the essence of what we're talking about too. People are able to manipulate you and take advantage of you spiritually because of their gift and because of their title. Um, and they know that you're not going to challenge it. It's, it's what we were talking about earlier uh, and how you would approach a certain situation. And I dealt with that. Um, and, and if you miss it, go back and listen to it. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I dealt with how I would approach it by my own nature. And I saw how wrong I was and, 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 and the way I would approach it. And how I needed to come up to what the scripture says. That's exactly what it's talking about. How you can be manipulated spiritually and not do anything about it or not say anything about it. And just allow that manipulation to continue to um, take place in your life. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you are being manipulated spiritually, you have to, for one, have the spiritual determined to understand that you are being manipulated spiritually. And then two, you have to understand how to cut that thing off and to move forward in Christ. You don't want to be manipulated to the point where you are doing things. You think you're doing something in the name of Jesus, but you're not doing it in the name of Jesus at all. You're doing it because you feel like you're pleasing that person or that title or that position more than you are pleasing God. Go ahead, bro. Let me tell you, you talked about that manipulation and I'm about to, to step in something and you know, there may be some people who disagree with me. And if you disagree with me, you know, I love you, but I'm just going to tell the truth. I am weary of any prophet that tells people not to watch the news. Mm -hmm. I, because to me, that is stage one of I want to keep you ignorant. Mm. And if I keep you ignorant, you just going to keep believing what I tell you to say. It's funny. That was, even when it comes to everything that's been going on with Trump and the election stuff, the common theme was all these prophets were saying, don't watch the news, don't watch the mm -hmm. news, the news is mm -hmm. fake, don't watch the news. And then you get these people who buy in, and then they show up at the Capitol, they're being interviewed, mm -hmm. and they sound stupid, mm -hmm. and they sound ignorant, mm -hmm. because they listen to that prophet telling them not to watch the news. And they have no idea what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I get weary when I hear preachers, because really, if you're saying what thus saith the Lord, the Bible, didn't the Bible say my people perish for a lack of knowledge? Yep. And you got and you and you telling them you don't want them to be knowledgeable about what's going on because I want you to be hook, line, and sinker of what I got to say. Mm -hmm. And that to me is stage one in getting manipulated. If what you're saying is true, you shouldn't be worried about whether or not. I'm watching the news. If anything, I should be seeing it play out. Yeah, I shouldn't be hiding from the news so I can think of my own alternative reality that what you're saying is happening when it really isn't. Mm -hmm. So I really do see that sort of manipulation that sort of plays into it. And 
When I start hearing stuff like that, people claiming to be speaking prophetic and they're telling people not to watch the news, that to me is step one. They're trying to manipulate people because they mm -hmm. really don't want them to be knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. and or to, to formulate way. or to formulate their own thoughts about things. It's the only the only way that you can really keep a person um, thinking the way that you want them to think is by what you said. Telling them not to do certain things. Don't listen to this person. Don't listen to that person. And then you you fill their head with the well, this person is wrong because of X Y and Z. It's, it's wrong to listen to this person because of A B C. Like and the more and more you you start to feed that and you believe that or you you internalize that, the more you believe that this person is wrong because of X Y Z and you whatever they say or do, you tune it out and you always look for the bad. <laughs> and you never really get to the place where you're able to formulate your own opinion because you're constantly thinking about, well, what I wonder if the person, I mean, it's just gonna sound bad. I wonder if the person who is manipulating me is thinking the same way. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, and it's like that person, if you saw the video of the person who died at the Capitol, mm -hmm. the video of them that morning driving, mm -hmm. their anger and their vitriol and everything they're saying is basically false yeah, it <laughs> is mean, but they had been so manipulated and radicalized that this is what you know it, this is what happens and now it creates a craziness mm -hmm. and so when i hear that and you start hearing people say oh don't watch the news don't watch this just listen to me that's 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 step one in the jim jones <laughs> witchcraft manipulation <laughs> flowing in the pathetic <laughs> flowing in the pathetic right and that's the truth. That's the honest to God truth. And so let me see. So I, I want to jump directly to. I'm not going to jump. We're going to keep reading. I, I just stopped where I want to get to. Verse 19, it says, you have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread put into death souls who should not die. And keeping alive souls who should not live by your lying to my people who listen to lies. You know what's interesting about the scripture? And as I was reading it, I, I thank the Lord because he literally just dropped this in my spirit. He's saying, you have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread. It's what we talked about earlier. How people pretty much line in their pockets all in the name of Christ. Um, and they're lying and prophet, and prophet lying and speaking and spreading lies. And he's saying you put into death souls who should not die. Only God knows who should live and who should die and who deserves his grace and who I won't say who doesn't deserve his grace, but who is in um, that 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 realm of who he knows who should be living their life and who should be, you know, I guess, manipulated or whatnot. If I'm wrong, y'all correct me. But. What's interesting here is that where he says, put into death souls who should not die and keeping alive souls who should not live by your lying to my people who listen to lies. And it's funny because he is saying here that he knows that you're being manip manipulated. <laughs> and those who are being manipulated, he knows that you're being manipulated, but he's not mad at you because he knows that you're manipulated, manipulated a bull, if that's a word, <laughs> and you listen to lies. <laughs> but he's more dealing solely with the prophets who are spreading these lies and able to line their pockets, gain barley and pieces of bread, uh, which is things, you know, barley and pieces of bread at time, very valuable things. So in this day and age, you would translate it to money and, and power and, and wealth and these things. And he's saying that, you know, you're 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 trading my name, you're profaning my name. All. You're, you're profiting off of my name by profaning it or by stomping over it, by destroying it. And verse 20 says, therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I am against your magic bands with your uh, which you hunt the souls like birds. And I will tear them from your arms and I will let the souls whom you, will, you who you hunt go free. The souls like birds. And that's how you know that that God knows that you're being manipulated. And he's still on your side um, and he understands that you are not in control of being manipulated, but it's, it's his will to set you free from being manipulated. It's his will to bring you out of bondage, to bring you out of that, that, that 
being told certain things that you know is not true, but you believe it's true and you want to believe it's true because the voices that you hear are telling you that it's true. And he's saying here in verse 20, he said, I will let the souls go whom you hunt go free, meaning I will let the people go whom these witches, whom these 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 um, prophet prophet lying prophetess, because he's still dealing with the women. He said, I will let you go. I will let you go free if you being manipulated by these people, meaning he is full of grace that he's able to grant you grace in that moment to allow you to be free in your thinking, free in your in your movement, free in everything that you're doing, because he wants to see you free. You, he knows you should not be in this. And he knows he understands your motives as to why you want to stay in it. But he also knows and his desire is for you to be free from this so that you can learn more of him, of who he truly is and desire more of who he truly is in spirit and in truth. And I think that when you look at just, and I'm not just going to limit this to just the women, women, um, prophet liars, whatever, all prophet liars, like, and, and all people who manipulate people and to get people to do whatever they want them to do. We should be in a place spiritually where we are able to discern fact from opinion. And one of the things that I thank God for, for me, is that I have been able to <laughs> read the Bible for myself and understand what it's saying. Um, and also understand when someone is giving me their opinion and trying to pass it off as, as fact and pass it off as this is what thus says the Lord. And I think what's a lot of the problem is, is that people um, have gotten in a place where they have confused or fused a lot of their um, their opinion with fact. And they try to pass it off as that. But God is saying, I know that you, you're sitting under that and I know that you, you you're not maybe strong enough to get away from that. I know that. But my grace is still here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm still here for you. I, I want to pull you out of that because I want you to know who I truly am. I don't want you to keep going through um, manipulate being manipulated time after time again. I know you hurt. I know I know you want to pay your bill, but you but you keep hearing that prophet say, "Give me X amount of money, and I will tell you what you need to hear." And the truth of the matter is that is that God is not mad at you he's mad at the prophet <laughs> mm -hmm. for doing that mm -hmm. and i think that we have to get to a place spiritually like i said to where we're able to discern that and we're able to come out of that and we're able to be free in that so do you want to add anything before i keep going because that's very true because the one thing i think about is you know I i'll use this example i remember even when i was leaving i was uh home sometime for school when I'd be in college and my, my, uh, the channel would always be on like a church channel mm -hmm. and you'd have a preacher up there and he's doing some major offering. And there was so, I'm sure for him to be on a national channel like that, I'm sure there were plenty of people that were pouring money out and believing if you pour out that seed that God's going to bless. And you, it's amazing. And you'll find out that, you know, the person I was watching that day, and I looked at him and I said, this dude sounds like a clown. Then I found out a year <laughs> later he got arrested for tax evasion. So, wow. but I, it does not mean, I bet there are plenty of people who sowed into that offering mm -hmm. that God still blessed, mm -hmm. even though that dude they sowed to was a crook. Mm -hmm. And even though God dealt with that person that claimed to be speaking for him, he still honored those people who were really sowing, believing they were doing the work of God. And God took what they were doing is still on it because he loved those people. Mm -hmm. Even if he said, I got to deal with this phony who claims to be speaking for me, who's really not, who's really taking advantage of my people and taking their money, but I'm not going to leave my sheep empty handed. I'm still going to make ways out of no way. I'm still going to bless them. I'm yep. still going to help meet their needs according to my riches and glory. 
but I'm going to deal with this phony. Yep. So that he doesn't keep robbing my people. Um, but it's just like that. I'm going to deal with these phonies and these leaders, but I still care for my people. And it's got to be like that. Yeah. You're right. It does. It really and does. It just makes me thankful. Let's me know that God, uh, even when I think I'm going the right way, this is how good God is. And this is the, you look at the scripture where it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm in a maze, even if I start going the wrong direction, the Lord is so gracious. They didn't just let me just keep going in the wrong way. He'll eventually show me it's the wrong way to help me get in the right direction. Yep. That's why we have to praise God for closed doors. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can look at a closed door and get upset that that door is closed and not realize this is God redirecting us mm -hmm. into the right direction. Mm -hmm. Maybe that person you thought you were listening to, maybe that preacher you thought you should be listening to, you just found out they are fraud. You just found out they are phony. You just found that that's not someone you should be listening to. But God is trying to redirect you in the right direction. That doesn't mean you fall out now and just quit the faith. He's trying to redirect you into the right direction. Maybe you need to pay more attention to your local pastor than to that national pimp out there claiming exactly. to be a prophet. Exactly. Maybe you need to be spending more time in your word and not just pouring out money every time you see somebody on social media say something. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to get more of him. Mm -hmm. And let that be the lesson we're getting from this and not just going, well, I'm just going to walk away from the faith because all of these preachers are wrong. No, there's right ones. Mm -hmm. There's preachers who's telling you the truth, mm -hmm. but get yourself in the right direction. Allow him to redirect you and mm -hmm. praise God for the closed doors. Exactly. Because when God closes doors, he's doing it for a specific reason. Exactly. Because he knows he knows what's going on and he knows where he needs to take you in order for you to, to advance in him. In order for him to take you to the next level, in order for him to take you to the next place, he has to close doors. And that means he has to sever ties that you're not ready to sever yet. And that's the hardest thing, because I think for a lot of people, you don't want to close those doors just yet because you're comfortable with that with, with that door being open. But God knows that I have to close this door in order for you to grow. I have to close this door in order for you to advance. I have to close this door in order for you to stop being manipulated and in order for you to open up your eyes and see exactly the tactics, the wrong things that were being done to you so that you can understand that his grace is sufficient. You can understand that his love is enduring and it's everlasting. And you understand that, as you said, you have pastors and preachers right in front of your own face who is going to preach you happy if you listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> And so that that's 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 really the, the biggest blessing here is that when God opens your eyes after he closes doors, he opens your eyes to see who he really is. And not only do you see who he really is, but you see the people that he's truly using to help you along the way. Um, that's why it's important that you listen to your own pastor. And not a lot of these other phonies, a lot of these other preachers, a lot of these other people who can manipulate you, who can take advantage of you, who wants you to sow into what they're doing, but not into what God is doing. And that's the sad thing. And I feel like a lot of times our 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 own preachers, our, our own pastors are overlooked and overshadowed. Um one thing a pastor has said, one of the worst things has said, and this is Pastor Pedway, he said, there's one of the worst things you can do to your pastor is compare that pastor some, to someone else. That's the worst thing you can do, especially if you're comparing your pastor to someone, um, to another prophet or prof or someone who's prophet lying to you. You, pro you. you comparing them to them and you want them to be like that. That's terrible mm -hmm. because you not only are you you're you're you know, you're you're killing that pastor's um uh, his spiritual encouragement a little bit, but you are trying to make this man or make this pastor, your preach, your own pastor to be somebody that they're not. And a lot of times God has not given them that same vision or God has not given them that same thing, you know? And that's why it's important that you listen, take heed to what your pastor is saying. If you're in a good Bible church, stay in that church, stay where you are at. Don't look to go anywhere else because you see a new movement is hop is, hop, is popping off. 
because another prophet is 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 out here and spreading lies and you think oh i i can align with that lie i'm gonna go and jump on it no stay where you at god has given you the church that you are in for a reason he wants you to learn he wants you to get the word the way that he wants you to get the word oh, so naja says he closes the eyes of the flesh and opens the eyes uh, spirit so that you can see God for who he is. That's true. That mm -hmm. is so true. He wants you to see who he really is. And that's one thing I can say for 2020 for me is that God closed my eyes to some things. He took me through a season where I literally had to depend on him and I had to listen to his word. I had to read his word, internalize it and meditate on it and listen to him, especially uh, specifically concerning his will for my life. Um, and I think that was the first time I, I had I actually did that because being um, young in the ministry and whatnot, I, I've been uh, in places where I've tried to do a lot of things that wasn't, you know, for me. And for me to have God really take me through those situations, take me through those things where he had to literally open my eyes so I can see just how good he is and see um, just how great he is, um, learn more about him and dive deeper into who he is. I appreciate that. And it's almost like I appreciate going through what I went through because of the fact that it just revealed to me more of who God truly is. Mm -hmm. He revealed more of himself to me. He revealed more of his spirit to me. He revealed more of his love to me. And I think that was lacking in the areas of my life that I needed. it. I think as a preacher, as a as a as a man of God, you have to understand who this loving God is. <laughs> and I know I'm kind of going all over the place and whatnot. I'm just really flowing with the spirit. But you really have to know who this loving God is as a man of God. And I think we, we kind of talked about this in Bible study the other night. Mm -hmm. And, and how we we need to have mercy and have love and compassion towards people because Christ showed that same love and compassion towards us. And oftentimes we get lost in the sauce as we're you know chasing after things and as we're trying to grow and advance and do all these different things. But the truth of the matter is, is that God's God is love. And I know that's like that's like the the the, the wrong thing to say for a lot of people. Like, oh, God is love. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's not Bible, but you know that's who he is. He's full of love. And you know why people don't like that is because they don't really understand what love is, mm -hmm. and we don't do a good enough job of teaching what love is. Yeah, and, and yeah. showing and displaying what love is. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's that's just the truth. We don't know how to show it. Because mm -hmm. let's say, for example, um, think about think of it like this. Let me. Uh, I don't want to open up too big a can of worms, but let's say, let's take the phrase, Christ, a phrase I guarantee you so many people have heard, Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship. Let's say mm -hmm. we've heard that phrase. Mm -hmm. If you talk to a couple that's been married for 40 years and went through thick and thin, got love at first sight, gets married, and they hear Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship, they compare it to their own mm -hmm. and get one picture of what that means. Mm -hmm. But then talk to the kid who's talking to three different girls at school, two with other girls on Facebook, two other girls on kick, two other girls on this social media platform and has a different girl that they talk to all the time and then tell them Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship. Their definition of a relationship is totally different than mm -hmm. the other definition of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And now they're viewing Jesus of one of 12 different things you can pursue mm -hmm. versus one, my only spouse marriage sort type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so really the terminology that we use can sometimes change up based on how people hear it. And I think the problem is you have a love and hip hop generation that mm -hmm. doesn't understand what love is. Mm -hmm. And so when you say God is love, they don't understand it. It's not that it's not true. It's that they lack understanding of what is truly love. They don't understand the love that corrects. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cause they see the love that enables. Enables and overshadows mm -hmm. rather than correct. The love that says, I don't care what my kid's doing wrong. I'm still going to defend my kid. Mm -hmm. That 
their love and not the love that says, I'm going to correct my kid because I want to make sure that my kid is right, mm -hmm. even when he's not in my presence. Mm -hmm. So there's definitions. People, it's the lack of people's understanding, but God certainly is love. We just have to educate people about what love truly is. Truly is. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I may do. I may do that next week. We may talk about love next week, um, next Friday. Maybe a good, a good little topic to, to kind of ease people back into. <laughs> Get everybody back. You ran away. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Oh, God is love. Okay. We, let's let's see what he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel uh, thirteen verse twenty one says, "Your veils also I will tear off and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand as prey." And you shall know that I am the Lord because you have disheartened the righteous falsely. And although I have not grieved them and your and you have encouraged the wicked that he should not turn from his evil way to save his life. Therefore, you shall no more see false visions or practice um, divinations or dividing. I will deliver my people out of your hand and you shall know that I am the Lord. Um, as we kind of wrap this up, I. It's, it's funny. We we talk about that love bringing correction. Um, this is God's way <laughs> of showing love to his people, to the prophet liars. <laughs> He's showing them that, hey, I will deliver my people out of your hand. I, I know that you out here doing all this crazy stuff. I know it. And I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to deal with that. But at the same time, as for my people. It's like, I'm going to deliver them out of your hand. I'm going to bring them out and I'm going to show them that I am the Lord God who loves them. And it's so interesting here because it's it's it shows and it kind of goes back to the point I made earlier. It shows how God is able to understand um, our. Uh, our ability to be manipulated, but at the same time, his his ability to still love us and his, his desire to bring us out of it. Um, I think that for a lot of people and we're, we're in this new age or this new place um, in Christianity where we are now covered out. People say we're now covered under the new Testament gospel and things like that, but we're in, a, we're in a we're in an interesting place where I believe that God is is He's showing His mercy towards people who do wrong. My hope is this: um, people, false prophets, and those who are doing wrong, and those who are out here spreading lies and doing things that are not um, in the name of Christ or in the name of Jesus. Um, my hope is that you get it right, and my prayer is that you run back to the father uh, with arms open wide asking for forgiveness for the things that you have done wrong and how you've mistreated people and manipulated people and and i be, i truly believe that god being full of mercy and full of grace will receive you back and will restore you after a, a period of course of <laughs> of getting it right mm -hmm. but you know, my hope is that people can can get back to being in right standing with God um, as Christians. Uh, if you're listening to this, um, if you're watching this, um, there is hope in Christ. There is hope in Jesus. You know, I know that a lot of what you heard throughout the years and even some of the stuff that you may be hearing today may be a little bit uncomfortable. It may be a little different, but there is hope for you and your hope is in Jesus. He said right here in verse 23 at the end, I will deliver my people out of your hand, meaning I will deliver my people out of the hand of the person who has manipulated them out of the hand of the person who is doing them wrong out of the hand of the of the person or that thing that is keeping you from God. He is able to deliver you out of it. But the truth of the matter is you have to want to be delivered out of that. You have to want to be brought out of that. And as comfortable as it may feel and as uncomfortable as it may feel to come out of it, you have to come out of it. Uh, 
God loves you so much that he wants to reveal more of himself, more of his spirit, more of his power to you. And I think that we have to get back as preachers preaching that we have to get back to showing that, demonstrating that through the way that we love, through the way that we talk to people, through the way that we deal with people. Um, I think that we have. I won't say everybody, but I think a good majority of people have gotten away from that um, discipleship. And I know this kind of going a little bit off. But it ties in. Discipleship is a huge component in this and making sure that God's people aren't manipulated, Um, mainly because discipleship brings about a type of relationship that requires you to constantly check in, to constantly talk, to constantly um, communicate with one another. That's how you know if somebody is being manipulated or that's how you know if somebody is being led astray. the church has got to do a better job with discipleship. We have to lead that by example. Um, that's one of the things that I want to do this year. I, I'm tired. And I know it's. I, I've said this earlier in, in one of my podcast episodes. Um, it's that I'm tired of always talking about what the church isn't doing and talking about the things that are wrong. It's time to demonstrate and bring about that correction. It's time to show people who God really is and who he truly is and the love he has for his people. And it's so easy to talk about these things. It's so easy to get on here and and do Bible studies, put people on blast and 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 read the scriptures and show the scriptures for what they truly are and, 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 and have people have to let the chips fall where they may be. But it's another thing to truly to truly be the change that you want to see. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's my heart. That's my spirit for this year. That's kind of like the theme for this year for me is, is taking things to the next level, leveling up. Um, I don't want to be the one that's always talking. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I want to be the one that's always doing and always proving. Um, and that's one, one of the reasons why I'm doing this, um, these late night Bible studies, uh, Friday night Bible studies. Uh, if you want to be a part of it, definitely jump, hop in. You know, I, I, I encourage the the dialogue. I encourage the growth. I'm not perfect. I don't know everything that's in the Bible, and I'm not trying to sit here and act like I do. <laughs> that's just point blank and period. But I do want to. I was gonna say, look at Bishop trying to be humble. <laughs> Used to. <it. laughs> look at Bishop trying to be humble. But I do want to have this journey with people um, showing my vulnerabilities, <laughs> putting them on display and, and showing the growth as we continue to grow together in this. Um, go ahead, Elder uh, um, Elder Omar, Pastor is, Elder. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, um, you know, one thing that the Lord really showed me, and you talked about really God wanting to really free us. Sometimes we could be manipulated, we could be lost, we could be confused. And really God showed me that uh, when I look at in Luke chapter 15, where it talks about the son who took his inheritance and Mm -hmm. ran off and did riotous living. And you look at that passage and at the end of the story, the son is being celebrated and the older brother is upset Mm -hmm. and doesn't want to go in the party. And when the father confronts him, he lets him know, you know, you never threw a party for me. And the father lets him know, he said, this was always yours. Uh, This, you always have had access to all this. Mm -hmm. Uh, You just never took advantage of it. And the one thing the Lord showed me through that was that Really, this is not just a story of one lost son. It's a story of two lost sons. Yeah. Even when you look at the context, it's Jesus talking to uh, sinners and then the scribes and the Pharisees show up trying to be critical. And so the Lord makes a story of two sons to illustrate that you're just as lost Pharisees in the house Mm -hmm. as these sinners are who are lost outside the house. And sometimes we could have our titles, we can be in church, we could get used to it, we could be doing all these things, and we don't even realize we're being manipulated. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize we have wrong thinking. We don't even realize that 
our mindsets are off. We can be just as lost while we're hand clapping and foot stomping and saying hallelujah and not even realize it. But yep. God loves us so much that he's not going to keep you lost. Exactly. He is going to show you the light. He's going to show you the way. He's going to show you the truth. Once you see it, you just have to take the opportunity and walk therein. I know for one me, you know, I can give a personal for personal example for me. I'm the type of person who's always liked to listen to sermons. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of preachers that I like to listen to. And one of my favorite preachers I listened to, he allowed me, the Lord allowed me to be so disappointed in what I saw the last couple mm -hmm. of months from him mm -hmm. because he got caught up in all this mess. Mm -hmm. And it was like the Lord was showing me, he was like, all right, enough listening to people talk about me. Mm -hmm. And why don't you take the opportunity to actually listen to me? Mm -hmm. Instead of just listening to people preach about me, listen to me talk to you about me. Yeah. And it's one of those things where the Lord, even in that, is showing me direction and saying, here, spend more time with me. So once again, God's using things that weren't good to put me in the right direction and to open my eyes even the more, mm -hmm. open my eyes even more clear. And I don't know where you may be at or where anybody else may be at who is listening to this. Allow the Lord to clear your vision. Mm -hmm so that you can more clearly walk in. Don't allow yourself to stay blind. Mm -hmm. Don't allow your vision to stay clouded. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated. The Lord will show you the truth. Yeah. And when you do, just walk therein. And don't feel like you have to give up. This is just the Lord putting you back in the right direction. Amen. Amen. I love that. We're going to close with that. Um, I want to um, just say if anyone uh, wants to have a further conversation about the things we talked about tonight, uh, definitely reach out to us uh, or, you know, both of us are available. You can inbox us. Uh, if anyone desires salvation, want to know who this Jesus is that we're talking about, uh, wants to know more about him, definitely inbox me, um, inbox Elder uh, Pickett as well. Uh, we would love to have the conversation with you. We would love to lead you to Christ. Uh, if you desire not to be led to Christ right now, that's fine. If you just want to have the conversation, hey, I'm all for it. But I, I, I want you to know that, you know, God is here for you. He loves you. He sees um, he's he loves you. He sees um, you as who he sent his son to die for. Uh, you are special. You are valuable. You are somebody uh, who he wants to redeem. Uh, he has. Um, a specific call or mark on you because he knows how valuable you are. So um, I appreciate everyone who has been with us throughout this entire time. I know we've been here for an hour and a half, well over an hour and a half. Um, I'm sleepy. I'm tired. We've been doing a lot today. <laughs> but um, I thank God for you guys for um, hopping on it. And for those who hopped on and commented, definitely I appreciate you guys. Um, this will be put up on YouTube. I'm going to take it down immediately from Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, those who want to watch it, go watch it on YouTube. Um, it'll be up on YouTube for eternity. So <laughs> God bless each and every one of you guys. We will see you guys later. All right. Be blessed.